Ross Okolo. I'm a second year PhD student in computer science at Cornell University. And today I'm going to discuss my work that's being done towards using object detection methods for mobile health. According to the World Health Organization, pneumonia accounts for 15% of deaths of children under the age of five, making it the single largest infectious cause of death for children worldwide. A key issue in combating pneumonia is effective diagnosis. In Sub-Saharan Africa and other low resource settings, poor infrastructure hampers pneumonia diagnosis, frequently delaying proper treatment until the infection has reached an, adv an advanced stage. The resurgence of deep learning, a field within machine learning that uses neural networks similar to those in the human brain to recognize and process data has greatly enhanced the efficiency of traditional diagnosis methods in medicine, improving patient monitoring, automated imaging such as x-rays, MRIs, and CT scans, and helping to predict diseases outbreaks like COVID-19. While these techniques haven't been commonly integrated within mobile health, or also called mHealth, they show extreme potential for mobile disease diagnosis. This work discusses progress made towards implementing a smartphone-based pipeline for detecting and diagnosing respiratory illnesses in children and low resource settings around the world. In computer vision, which is a subset of machine learning that allows images and videos to be detected um, the way that humans can, um, techniques are developed to allow computers to understand image and video content similar to the way humans can. Object detection is a computer vision technique that leverages machine learning to locate instances of objects and images or videos. These objects contain features such as distance, shape, size, or color that help assign these objects to certain classes. Some of which you can see here. So um, on the photo on the right, um, you see some classes are like car, or dog, or a bus. And um, image object detection is used for all these instances. It's also used to detect all sorts of things, um, like people, animals, and cars. And this has been applied to detect diseases affecting crops, um, recognize faces, annotate images, and much more. The objectives on this slide describe what I expect to achieve within this project. The goal of my research is to develop a mobile health application that uses computer vision methods to diagnose pneumonia and other pediatric respiratory illnesses. In a typical hospital visit or medical examination, a child may be held by the parents or placed on the operating table. The object detection models I develop um, should be able to account for these types of scenarios while accurately recognizing children. Also, with my target deployment region being in Sub-Saharan Africa and Southeast Asia, the eventual mobile application we need to work in settings where the app is installed on older smartphones or used in an area with low network coverage. Knowing what factors affect prediction accuracy and processing speed of these object detection models will inform my future design decisions and results um, and the smooth integration of an object detection model. Our approach is broken up into three steps and split into two broad categories of data collection and model development. We've collected over 300 images and manually labeled them in preparation for training. Labeling these images allows the object detection models to separate objects into classes and provides a baseline for what a respective object looks like. So in my case, we're labeling um, for, to know what the child and the parent looks like. On the right, um, you can see some of the images used in developing and training the model. This data set was also used to train three separate object detection models in terms of model development. And this helps you learn um, what a child looks like and what a parent looks like. Um, these models are then evaluated to determine their accuracy on test data and feasibility for being integrated into a mobile health application. So here are some of the object detection models I trained on the collected data set. MobileNet is a low latency, low power object detection model developed by Google and designed for use on mobile devices. And InceptionNet and ResNet are regional convolutional neural network architectures, or RCNNs, that have been trained to classify over a thousand object categories. All of these models were originally trained on the COCO dataset, which is a large scale object detection dataset created by researchers at Microsoft. And I retrained these models on my respective dataset, which was the one I showed in the previous slide, to adapt to parent and child classes. The metrics of these models are described as follows. For the speed, it's measured in milliseconds and it's computed by the reported running time per image. 
And so the developers of these um, respective models actually reported um, these benchmarks. And so these are these don't necessarily reflect um, the running speeds on my machines just because they can vary across a wide range of devices. Next, we have the mean average precision or MAP. This is a popular metric to measure the accuracy of object detectors. Object detectors. It computes the true positives or correctly identified images um, in the data set um, when you're training. And overall, um, these values range from zero to 100. And these map values, they seem a little bit low, um, but the accuracy values um, are actually averaged over all classes in the COBO data set. So with over 1,000 classes, there are chances for outliers. And by outliers, I mean um, some cases where uh, the machine learning models or these object detection models uh, were not able to classify or predict um, with a high accuracy on, rip, on some classes. And so this may have brought the average down as a whole. But overall, um, for an object detection framework, these are usually the standard um, accuracy values you see. And loss, it detects how bad the model predicts on a single sample. And it provides a general idea of how the model is learning to recognize classes. In this case, it provides an idea of how well the model can detect the child um, versus a parent. The lower the loss, the better the model is performing. And outputs dictate what kind of infant shape a box or a mask um, is shown on a respective image. Um, in the case of this, um, these models that I tested, they're all boxes, but in some cases you may see masks. Aside from being good indicators of accuracy, these metrics provide insight into the bandwidth and memory that would be occupied if these models were running on a mobile device. With these metrics in mind, we have conducted an analysis between these developed models to examine their feasibility and in being integrated within a mobile health application. So um, here are some of my results um, from testing of these three um, object detection models. And so as MobileNet is on the top, and it remembers the one that was created by Google, and in this case, it actually performs the worst. Um, in all cases, it's unable to detect a child, um, but um, compared to the other results, we do see lower confidence values for the boxes surrounding children. So this shows that the model does recognize that they are not 100% confident with their prediction. And also, excuse me, with the, um, the loss values that we saw um, on the previous page being around like 0.61, which is somewhat high um, for an object detection model, uh, we kind of assumed that it would take a while um, for the accuracy um, to get up there. Next, um, we have InceptionNet, which is in the middle. And it performs much better, um, but we do see some cases of over, overlapping predictions on the first and the third images. And as you can see, um, there are multiple boxes that indicate the parent. There should usually just be one. And on the last image, um, we have a case where medical equipment is incorrectly identified as a baby. But um, this really isn't a big problem because it can be rectified uh, with training the model a little bit longer. Also, um, and we have last, uh, ResNet. It performs the best out of all the models. And this is not really surprising since it had the highest math scores and the lowest loss for all the models. Remember that we said the lower the loss, the better the model. The child and parent are correctly identified um, in all the images, and were correctly identified in most of the, in other examples um, from the testing data set. Um, in conclusion, um, we know that um, faster models are more helpful for mobile processing. But um, in some cases where we have object detection models directly created um, for mobile processing, we see that um, it's not always the case. So Google, the developer of MobileNet, claims that it was designed to effectively max maximize accuracy while being mindful of restricted mobile resources. And our experiments show this to be relatively true in terms of speed, but in comparison to other object detection models like InceptionNet and ResNet, uh, we see that MobileNet has a worse accuracy. In medical situations where accuracy could be a choice between life or death, the speed trade-off may not be ethical when choosing between these types of object detection models. Future work will investigate how these factors affect on-device model processing and options such as training on a larger data set or refining the model parameters to be a little bit more specific um, and extracting features will be experimented with to determine how models can fit both the criteria for processing speed and accuracy. Um, here's my work cited, and any questions? Judges, you can ask your questions at this point. Okay. Janasa, I have a question. Uh, this is Jana. Yes. 
Um, I may have missed it at the beginning. I may, or maybe I didn't make the connection. Okay. What was the reason? Um, so I understand the model, uh, the AI part of it, and the uh, identifying children. But what was the yes. connection to pneumonia that you mentioned at the beginning? Yeah. So um, I mentioned this in my. Let's see, it was my fourth slide. A fourth different slide. So essentially, um, when you're trying, in this case, um, in developing regions, um, or in just like in regular hospital visits, um, sometimes like children have to be held by their parents just because they can't like stand still or like sit still by themselves. And so um, before we want to actually um, go in and rest, uh, sorry, diagnose pneumonia or like other respiratory illnesses, um, we have to be sure like the model can discriminate between the parent and the child. So we're not actually like monitoring the parent um, when we should be monitoring the child. And so this is just like the first step um, in the overall um, detection um, got a pipeline uh, for detecting pneumonia. Uh, so this is like what I focus on for this presentation. So when you're saying monitoring, you're talking about like distance monitoring. Essentially, so, um, yeah, kind of like how a nurse uh, would look at a child okay. to see like, oh, they're breathing fast, et cetera, et cetera, yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, any other questions? Okay. All right. Thank you.